came across me as a kid, or even as a young teenager, and told me I'd be where I was today, driving around Coms PUI 1, 10 2, in a police uniform and a police car, I wouldn't have believed you at all. Good up. My name is Luke Ronaki. I'm 22 years old. Uh, I was brought up in a different household. Both my parents are fully deaf uh, and English and sign language are both my first languages. Uh, growing up in a deaf household with deaf parents uh, had a few challenges. So I had to grow up pretty fast, knew how to internet bank by 9, 10 years old. Pretty much got to the point where about 11, 12 years old my dad would just hand me his login card and I'd be paying all the bills and doing everything for him really. And then he wouldn't even pay me for my services, you know. <laughs> Told me uh, it was all TLC, well, what's that? <laughs> nah. Yeah, so coming up as a kid, everything was, you know, pretty good. Happy families, everyone got along. And then about, uh, when I was about age 11, uh, my mum left to Australia. So it was pretty much just me and my dad. And my dad worked ridiculous hours. I'd wake up in the morning, he's gone. I'd come home from school and he'd get home when I was in bed, pretty much. So at that, I was quite free at that time. You know, no one was kind of monitoring me. So that's when I started going, I wouldn't say off the rails, but yeah, started going down different avenues of life, I guess. Did you know about children and the Jasmine? Behind your back, check you doing things, well, planning yeah, things. Yeah. Did you know what you did, didn't they? Dumb. Some. <laughs> Dumb. My work with him. I was the worst. Yeah. We ran like I can. He couldn't catch me. Too far. I was too far. I just kicked your ass. <laughs> He'd tell me he'd kick my ass. Why run me? Why run me? Cry, cry me. He'd get close. <laughs> but then... <laughs> but then he'd run out of speed. <laughs> and I was off. Fun for me back in high school was lunch, girls and fights. I was drinking, well binge drinking a lot in the weekends and hanging out at mates' houses, not going to school, drinking, getting up to mischief, not really getting anywhere. I just kind of woke up one morning, you know, and everyone was lined up to grab, you know, a can out of the box, and I thought, you know, I'm not going to get anywhere living like this. So I got a job at Spookers, and it kind of distanced me from um, the life I was leading at the time, and it uh, gave me room to start reflecting, I guess, and starting to try and develop who I could be, other than what I was. Comes from PUI 1, 1078 104, Wellington Street, Pukeko. My dad came from a bikey scene. He used to um, ride bikes and he had uh, gang affiliations. So he had multiple run-ins with, you know, old time cops. And he'd tell me how, you know, they'd scrap it out in the pub and the cops, uh, you know, he got a few good hidings in his day from the police, which growing up hearing is, you know, oh, you know, these cops sound like, you know, they don't sound like a very good bunch of people doing this. In an environment where everyone's saying, oh, you know, if the police and a real anti-police kind of environment, I was just brought up with that stigma, you know. There wasn't a, there wasn't a defining moment that made me choose, you know, I wanted to be a police officer. I started to see you know, the good, the good side of policing and the good they do, the opportunities. My dad would always come home saying, oh, you know, we need extra services um, for deaf people to be able to contact police. We can't pick up the phone and ring 111. And I, was, and I was thinking, man, you know, something needs to be done here to bridge that gap. And same with um, a lot of youth out there. And um, there are a lot, a lot of good programs at the moment going on between youth and police, which is real good, bridging those gaps. If there was anything I could impart from my experience to any uh, youth coming through these days, or anyone really, uh, not even just youth, but find something you really need, it will, you know, you feel like you need to accomplish, and just throw everything at it, and find good role models. That's my thing, I had very few role models growing up, so I ventured out myself and found my own. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger for one is one of my greatest role models, 
and I know he is for millions around the world. So find out what you need to do and ask for help, yeah, because you can't do everything on your own. I was, I was the same, I was, I was stubborn, I would do everything myself. I didn't need help from anyone. And I, I'm still like that to this day, but I slowly learned to let people in and you know, put my hand up and ask for help, yeah.